we have been seeing a broader market sell-off after the rally we had through the summer. And of course, that's included the tech sector. But how are these companies actually faring in terms of fundamentals? Well, who better to answer that than Vitaly Mosinov, Global Technology Analyst at TD Asset Management. Vitaly, great to have you back on the show. Great to be here, Greg. We are now <laughs> entering September, two-thirds through this quarter. How are you viewing the health of the tech sector right now? Uh, it's, it's been mixed this year. We had a second quarter results that were okay, but they weren't particularly great. And so investors are very much questioning the way forward for technology stocks at this juncture. Is it going to be more of the same choppiness or could things get better? Do we have a read, and now that we are two-thirds of the way through this quarter, of the actual fundamental health of some of these companies? Can we start to make any sort of, uh, not pronouncements, but maybe just some sort of observations? I, I think they're doing good, but they're not doing great. You've mm -hmm. definitely seen uh, weakness, some, headwind, some headwinds are emerging, uh, longer deal cycles with some of these companies. They're just having trouble selling their product a lot of the time. Um, so it, it's, um, it's headwinds, but I would say that they're not catastrophic. It's just that the market at this juncture really takes everything and amplifies those fears. It, it, makes it, it makes it the end of the world for just about anything that happens, and that's not really the case right now. Now, the big debate, obviously, through the summer was that the rally that we were enjoying, and it was flowing through to the tech space and, and more broadly across the equity markets, uh, was it a bear market bounce or was it the start of something else? And, there, you know, a lot of questions were hanging over. This has been a rough uh, couple of sessions, really, since last Friday. What, what do you make of that summer rally, specifically when we saw the rally in some of those tech names? Yeah, that was a, uh, took people for a spin. It was a sharp rally coming out of the quarter, and then things just started giving back all those gains. We've been seeing uh, really an unwind of that entire rally. So <clears throat> I think that what you had is very much uh, fear heading into the quarter. Companies coming in reporting, reporting better than expected results. That fear coming off the table. But now again, uh, in between the reporting periods, people just don't know, right? Uh, what's happening? There's different economic data coming every single day. And so Things are, things are just in flux, and uh, without any hard data points, investors are, are, are again going into panic mode. Okay, so let's talk about the longer term then. If we sort of take a look at historically the performance of some of these names, what could we expect? You know, not in the next several days, because that's so hard to guess, <laughs> even the next several weeks of all this chopping. This longer term, what are you expecting? Well, longer term, the big question is, uh, can tech return to our performance, right? I think this is the, the, this is the big question, and we've seen, uh, we'll have a chart up illustrating this very phenomenon. 2017, 2018, 2019, tech stocks, they were in the driver's seat. They were doing much better than the rest of the market. Somewhere around mid-2020, you began to have a, a, a tug of war between the rest of the other sectors. And you can see that when that chart is going up, tech is outperforming. When it's going sideways, you've really got this phenomenon of some days tech underperforming, some days tech outperforming. So longer term, is, it, is that line going to go back to that positive slope again? That's the question. That's the question. What about the actual fundamentals of it all, too? I mean, at the very basic of things, we invest in companies because we like their earnings potential going forward, and we want to take part in that success. What, what can we sort of glean? I think you have another chart to this point as well uh, from that information. Yeah, we invest for the long term and, and, and that chart has a positive slope. Something outperforms something else when earnings growth are better, is better. Ultimately, that's what we're looking for. And so that's why the second chart is so critical. What you see in the second chart is going back, the line for year over year growth in technology stocks, that line, that's the orange line up on your screen, historically higher than the rate of growth for the rest of the market. So no surprise that it's technology stocks that have outperformed. Better earnings growth, better share price growth. But what you see up on your screen there is, as we came out of the pandemic, it's the rest of the market that began to shine, the blue line over the orange line. Now, a big part of that is because those non-tech companies did so poorly during the pandemic. But still, Earnings growth is better in the rest of the market, and so other non-tech stocks are being rewarded. Million dollar question, can that orange line regain supremacy? Can technology stocks show that structural growth that they're known for and give investors that comfort? Welcome them, welcome them back into, into uh, investing in, in technology. 
Obviously, investors, when they saw that massive rise in technology stocks early in the pandemic, sort of got spoiled by some of those gains, right? Some of those are real high flyers. And then, of course, you get these outsized gains, then you saw a pullback in the space. Uh, people talk about, you know, bubbles. They talk about crashes. Uh, if you're going to put perspective on a longer term, what does the space look like? Are those terms a little too... Uh, Alarmist? Well, uh, greed and fear, uh, the two words over the last few years. And, and there was greed in 2020, and you saw a lot of meme stocks, a lot of high flying tech stocks really go to the moon. Right now, they're reversing those gains. And the narrative uh, continues to be, I'll use the word, an influx uh, still to, throughout this year. Look, you've got people saying that there's a big crash coming. You've got others saying that, no, you're, you're going to have a sharp rebound. and all-time highs in a matter of months. There's people in both camps. And as I look at these businesses and read through the fundamentals and think about 2023, 2024, I really don't see either of those scenarios. You've got solid businesses, the likes of Microsoft and Apple that have a lot of good things going for them. Like any other business, they have some, some headwinds that they're facing as well. But net net, it's a sector that's still full of pretty solid companies that should be able to deliver you that earnings growth in the long run. I know we're going to get deeper into some of these individual names later in the show, but when I think about the sector as a whole, I mean, these are technologies that we've learned to live with. And although people got very excited in those early innings of the pandemic, it's hard to see us saying, well, I don't need that technology anymore. I mean, it's sort of just ingrained in our regular lives. Yeah, that's very much the case. And you've, um, it doesn't, doesn't take a lot to figure out who the big technology companies are and which products of theirs that we use. They're actually all around us and in, in my pocket we're, right we're now. We're surrounded. Yeah. <laughs> we're surrounded, right. And that's a whole different privacy conversation <laughs> we could have. Uh, but it, you're absolutely right. And so I think, look, bottom line, uh, sometimes investors think, look, technology, there's something unique here and it doesn't have anything to do with the economy. And so as a result, they expect these stocks and these earnings to grow and grow and grow. And this here is just a reminder that when you're that big and that, as you said, pervasive in people's lives, well, guess what? As the economy slows, these businesses slow as well.